Are you planning for retirement, buying a home, sending your kids to college, or looking for ways to protect your estate assets? The Simply Advised podcast connects you to trusted professionals, subject matter experts who communicate critical information in a meaningful and memorable way to guide you to make smart choices. Listen in as our experts help you handle whatever life throws your way. Hello and welcome to another Simply Advised podcast. Today we're going to interview Dean Thurman. He's a financial advisor with InvestWise Financial. In fact, he's the co-founder of InvestWise Financial, and he also has a designation called the AIF, which is the Accredited Investment Fiduciary. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about what makes Dean and his practice fundamentally unique and different from the other advisors down the street. Dean, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Matt. I like to start out these podcasts by just finding out a little bit more about who you are and what makes you tick. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming this co-founder of InvestWise Financial, please? Sure. Yeah, about uh, just going on 31 years ago, I graduated uh, 1989 from Central Michigan University's accredited business school. And I knew that I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to be a business owner. I knew I wanted to be important, if you will, or a contributor to the community. Didn't really, I was kind of squeamish on blood, so I didn't want to be a doctor. You know, I thought about being a, a orthodontist and I I decided, you know what, numbers and investments really appealed to me. So when I was just 22 years old, I got all my accreditations and I started my journey as a financial advisor. And like so many financial advisors, it was really difficult to find new clients as, as a young guy. In fact, I remember somebody telling me that I looked like the paper boy in a suit. I lived so young. I mean, who's going to invest all this money with somebody like that? So I really honed my skills on getting to know people as people and not so much uh, just a transaction, a stock buy or a sell. And I decided I really wanted to help people plan for their retirement and develop a relationship with each one of my clients that could last 10, 20, hopefully 30 or more years. And that's actually fairly unique as a financial advisor. Many advisors will switch from one brokerage firm to another or you know, move around within the profession. And I really wanted to have long lasting relationships with people. I've found a lot of great fits through educational seminars over the last 30 years where I was the presenter of everything from how to reduce your taxes in retirement to maximizing social security and Medicare. Really got to meet a lot of clients that way. And here I am almost 31 years later and loving every day of it. Well, before we get into your area of expertise, since you've already kind of previewed a little bit about really what does make you unique and different, not only staying in the same place for as long as you have, but really being focused on the relationship and not the transaction. How do you keep it up? I mean, 30 plus years of being a financial services professional, is a, that's a long road to hoe. I mean, how, what do you do to stay fresh and to you know, continue this positive energy that you bring to our industry? That's a great question, Matt. Uh, you know what? I wake up every day just excited, like literally excited to get to work. I'm one of those people that are a little bit bummed out uh, when the weekend comes around, because I because I won't be able to be <laughs> won't be at the office, and and let me let you know too. It doesn't mean I'm a workaholic. I, I very much blend my family life, which I have four awesome children. One of my adult children works with me at Investwise Financial. My ex-wife works with us at Investwise Financial. Some of my best friends are here. Really blended work and family and friends all together. And I don't feel like I'm working at all. I don't know who it was that said, uh, find something that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And that's, that's really where I'm at. I, I couldn't be uh, more excited to have found that great fit for my personality and, and my love. One of the reasons I get up, uh, like I'm, I'm shot out of a cannon every morning. I used to wake up around seven o'clock, but since I got my CPAP, I'll tell you what, man, I, I, I only have to sleep for about six hours. I start doing the emails around 4.30 in the morning just because I'm so excited. 
well, not everybody has the the blessings of, of, of that sort of thing, but many people do. And as they continue to save for their long-term retirement, whatever that looks like, there are a lot of things that go into that. And what makes you unique and different is the fact that your goal is to become the family's advisor. Again, focusing on relationships and not focusing so much on the transactions involved. And you have a tool that we're going to talk a little bit about today, which is the Family Estate Organizer with a Heart. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of this, would you mind telling us where this came from and really why it's so important for you to use this with your clients today? Sure. Uh, and, and thank you for that question, Matt, because that really gets down to the nitty gritty of, of what differentiates my practice and, and my relationship uh, with the community compared to so many other financial advi advisors and stock traders out there in that I really feel like money management to some degree is a commodity. I mean, pretty much anybody can crunch the numbers on how much money somebody should save in their 401k or where's the smartest place to get $20,000 to remodel the kitchen and minimizing taxes and all that type of stuff. But I really want to get to know not only the client, but the client's children, uh, if not one-on-one, -on -one, then at least still in concept and have those conversations. And many of my clients, I, I consider them business friends. We've known each other for so long. And now that I've been doing this for so many years, like many advisors out there, we see people that, you know, maybe they became a client when they were in their 50s and now they're in their 80s and, and they've passed away and they've left their, their spouse or maybe they were the second spouse to go. And our whole society leaves people so bare and, and so unhelped when they lose their, their, their husband or their wife or, or their parent. And how, do, you know, how does that person go on? I mean, it's, it's, it's hard enough emotionally, but what if that person wasn't intimately involved with everything financial? Where do you go to learn about the, uh, the where, where is the trust or the will or the financial statements? It's, it's, it's such a difficult time to go through when, when you lose somebody you love like that. And then to have the burden of all this administrative garbage and to kind of have that all on your shoulders. We have clients that come in that they say, you are our second call. I called our kids and then I called you because I don't know what to do. Or I just lost my mom. You know, as you know, my father passed five years ago. Mom just passed. Now what do we do? How do you take care of things? I realize that society in general is so ill prepared to help somebody move forward, uh, both financially, but also emotionally after somebody right. passes away. And there's a lot of binders out there, if you will, or, you know, three ring binders where you can put statements and you can put your trust and you can put kind of those types of things all together in a very cold little file folder. But the conversations when clients come in and they've just lost somebody, of course, they want to know what we have to do with their beneficiaries and how much money is there and are they going to be okay? Of course, they want to know those things. They also, after 15 minutes or 20 minutes of our, our one or two hour appointment, that's all taken care of. We said, well, you're in good hands. This is what we're going to do. These are the steps we're going to take. But what about all the other, the, the, the conversation quickly turns to their family. You know, how are you doing and how are your adult children doing? I know that you're, you know, you know the, that the deceased loved fishing up in Northern Michigan Oh yeah, that was his cabin. Oh my gosh, come to think of it, I have no idea how to take care of that cabin. I, I here it is the fall, and my husband used to go up there and winterize the cabin. I have no idea how to do anything like that. Who should I call? What should I do? And I'm not in great health either. And our dog's only five years old, and I don't know what we're going to do with our dog when I pass away. And we start having conversations that are so much more than 
just how much money they have in their IRAs, how it should be allocated, where should their 5000 a month they need come from. And I realized we need to put all that in one place. For my uh, 30th anniversary last March, I said, you know what? I, I talked to my team and I said, I'm going to design a organizer that combines both the client's financial necessities, other financial statements like, you know, bank account stuff, safety deposit box stuff, even, even family IOUs and payables and their tax returns and all that kind of stuff, obviously investment statements, together with the other important aspects to living your full life and, and passing that knowledge ne- to the next generation that, that might need it, that goes way beyond financial statements and goes beyond legal documents like wills and trusts and all that. So we put together a, a section in the family estate organizer called My Life to Share, where we have actually special message envelopes with parchment paper. And on the envelope, it says this can be opened by anybody or you know, a little checkbox next to anybody or just one specific person so that you can actually speak to somebody from the grave and, and share things that maybe you couldn't say while you were alive. And of course, we hope it's all nice things and it's not revenge things, but you know, <laughs> I mean, in li- life can be complicated and, and maybe there's messages to, s- to send down, good positive messages that uh, are family secrets. You only want to be known after, you're, after you've gone. And there's a whole section on their favorite things, their favorite color, their favorite song, their favorite food, things that a hundred years from now, great, great grandchildren might be flipping through this and saying, wow, look at what, what great, great, great grandma put about Uh, family traditions and family recipes, different personal information. And look, here's a section for a couple of of great, great, great grandma and grandpa's pictures of themselves and their families. It's all in in one place in that family organizer. So that's why we say it's with a heart. And let me tell you how we use this in our practice. I just thought it was going to be a nice gift to our clients. And what I realized after my admin who's been with me 25 years and my my business partner that's that's helping work as a team with me scott who's starting to see a lot of my clients it's really a gift to the next generation it's not even really to my clients they're gifting something to the next generation of hey you know there's a section on here and where are your keys right Where, where where is where are dad's keys to his tool chest to the pole barn or the tractor or how do you take care of the boat? Little sections on there, little quirky things with people's you know, toys and, and second homes. And what we did is we set up a one hour appointment with each and every one of my clients. And I don't care how much money, I have clients that have less than $10,000 with me. They've just been around forever. And like I say, they're front, we gave these family estate organizers, which are thick leather bound, beautiful binders that are, etched with la- with a laser in the front with the family's name on it. We gave one to each and every one of our clients. And then we set up appointments and went through the binder, especially the part with the heart with each and every one of our clients. And all of a sudden my new partner, Scott, who's, you know, he's been an advisor for 20 years. He's been at InvestWise for 10, but my, is a stranger to my clients. All of a sudden they're bonding and crying with all of us together talking about their life. There's a section on there, what were you like when you were 20? Where did mom and dad meet? And it, man, does that ever just create a relationship on a whole different level with our clients and one that we really treasure. Well, let's talk a little bit about the difficult conversations here because it's wonderful to have the tool and something that can be passed down from generation to generation, but you have to be a very specific kind of person to have these difficult conversations because you're talking about something that we as a society don't seem to be really super comfortable talking about. Can you, like for our audience, so they can understand some of the questions that you are going to ask out of this uh, family estate planning organizer, 
Can you give us some examples of some of those questions? You've given us some categories, but let's let's drill down a little bit more on some of the more difficult questions that you know get you to where you want to go with your clients to help them truly pass on more than just their money. Part of being a financial advisor, of course, is to help shepherd a, a, a family's financial value from one generation to the next. But what we really pride ourselves on with, with my practice is helping to shepherd family values and information that isn't just about money from one generation to the next. So in the section of, of my favorite things, I filled one of these out for myself. My dad who lives with us, uh, he filled one out. And it takes, you know, it, it takes many hours to fill this out. We, we give everybody, you know, we tell them, you know, it'll probably take you a year to fill this whole family state organizer out if you spend a half hour, an hour every weekend on it. This is really an heirloom to leave down that people can just thumb through years from now. Questions like, hey, what's your favorite, what's your favorite food? You know, what kind of shows did you like to watch? What's your favorite season? What, what kind of family traditions were your favorite? What attracted you the most to, to your spouse? Why did you decide to get, to get married? There's a section on a big area to write after. What are your special family memories? What has your work experience taught you? Hmm. What was your wedding day like? What were you like as a young adult? So, you know, I, I would love to have that kind of information on my great, great, great grandfather. I mean, who wouldn't yeah. love to hear what he was like when he was 20 years old and, you know, why he got married and who he got married to. I, I love all of that. That's such a wonderful insight into being able to leave such a great legacy in, in something that's so, so organized, but, but not trying to be a total devil's advocate here, Dean, but do you get objections to this, man? I mean, do you get people who to say, whoa, hold on here. This is way too heavy for me. And, and if so, what, what do you do about that? Well, Matt, we don't actually fill this out with them. What we do is we go through kind of an orientation and an explanation of, of what this binder is. We send it to their home. And then we have now, because, you know, social distancing, we're not meeting with too many people face to face. We set up a Zoom meeting and we go through all five sections with them. And, and, and we say, hey, this is yours to keep. This isn't something that, that we're going to, you know, have at our office. Here's how each section is laid out. And this is what we're hoping for you to achieve in each section and, and the message you're going to convey. There's certain sections on there. We suggest that they fill out in their own penmanship because a penmanship is kind of like a fingerprint. And that's something that would be interesting to generations to follow. What was great, great grandma's penmanship like? So we don't get objections, if you will, about asking those nosy questions because we're not actually asking them. They're doing that. They're filling this out in the privacy of their own home. However, we do have some clients that say, you know what, that's not for me. Uh, thanks for this beautiful binder, but um, I, I don't see myself filling this out. It's been very rare, but we have had out of the 275 that we sent out, about a half a dozen said, I already have this. I don't, I don't really want to complete it. And I think it's just because we haven't got the message across to them of, of kind of, of, what, of what this is. But I certainly don't want to give people a bunch of homework to do. And if they don't want to do it, that's completely up to them. And hopefully they still appreciate the sentiment. One of the big things that seems to be happening right now in society is the sandwich generation. Do you ever hand this off to the kids of aging parents so that the kids can take their parents through these conversations? Well, yes. Yes, we do. Right now, these are all custom made in our office. We have a little room that we just put these together ourselves. And so it's not like there's an unlimited supply and these were all put together with the help of my family and coworkers. This isn't something you just buy off the shelf or you order on Amazon or anything like that. They're very unique to our practice. We took months in designing this. So we're still in the first wave 
of getting them out to all of our clients, but we've already had clients ask us, hey, you know, this would be great for my adult children. I'd love to give them something like this as a gift. And we're looking for ways to accommodate uh, that next generation. But as a financial advisor that wants to work with more than just one generation in a family, what a great opener uh, to have that conversation about our clients as kids and, and grandchildren and even their best friends. It's a, it's a great way to open up conversations uh, for referrals as well and as we go through the family estate organizer because they start including stories about their, uh, about their coworkers and, and other, uh, not just family members, but also friends. Now, there are some technical things that you want to make sure that they are including in this organizer. Would you mind walking through some of the more non-emotional kind of uh, not necessarily run of the mill estate planning things that everybody needs to have, but just so that our audience can understand that we have the the relational aspect of it, but there's also a very practical aspect to this estate organizer also. There is, and, and I want to give credit where credit is due. Although the part with a heart really came from our organization, a lot of these other pieces, especially the practical part, parts came from uh, some of, of my mentors, some other folks in the industry like Jason Smith, who, who's very well known for family estate organizers. And we borrowed the best from several other advisors and family estate organizers that are out there and brought them all together. But certainly the practical part of it would be like the survivor's checklist, for instance. We have a fully laminated checklist that says, hey, basically, uh, what should you do immediately if you lose a spouse? You know, here's a bullet points of seven things, including arranging an obituary notice, contact friends and relatives, make, make arrangements for dependents and pets, uh, cancel regular elder assistance services, secure the deceased's home and remove valuables. And then it goes on to what should you do in the next 30 days? Who should, who should you contact? Of course, our contact information is there as their financial advisors, but also, you know, Social Security Administration, Health Insurance, Veterans Administrations, payers of any pensions or annuities, notices to the IRS. There's 15 different things, different bullet points of what you need to do in the, in the next 30 days. And then what to do in the next 60 days. Example, notify creditors, transfer titles. How about the next six months? Well, you got to review your finances, replace lost pensions, create or revise your financial plan, contact information. We have the actual phone numbers and contact information for Equifax and TransUnion and the Social Security Administration and the Hospice Foundation of America. So there's a lot of, you know, real practical information as soon as you lose a loved one. But then also the financial information is in there as well in a section on the important people to notify, uh, medical requests. What about care for minor children or dependent adults that still might have been in your life? Care for pets. There's, there's a lot of sections just for the, the practical parts of tying up loose ends when, uh, when you lose somebody. It really does take a special kind of person to manage those conversations. Would you mind, if you don't mind walking us a little bit down memory lane here, would you mind giving us a, a story of, of, of a person who, whether their significant other had passed and they had brought this back into you, or even when this thing was developing in, in your long career as a financial advisor, a financial services professional, so that our clients can maybe get a greater understanding of the depth of relationship that you're really looking for here. Would you mind telling us a story about somebody who brought this back or this idea back and you walked them through it and allowed them to have some sort of some relief or some of the outcomes that happened after their significant other died? We have had two clients that have passed away recently since, uh, since sharing these family estate organizers with our client base. And both of them have not only spoken about the, the practical part and the help of this, but how they were so happy that they started having these conversations and filling out the important parts that die with somebody when, you know, all, all the, 
all the knowledge and all the history of the family that dies when, when, when somebody passes. So both of those clients that came in to talk about their finances, both said that they had just started doing the family estate organizer with their deceased spouse and got some, they, they just felt so happy and, and fulfilled and, and, and blessed that they had some time to discuss these subjects with the person. Both deaths were unexpected. And that was met also with sadness that they weren't, uh, that they didn't fully fill this out yet. And they actually felt a loss that they, that they wouldn't have had this uh, fully filled out. So it's, it's too new to have a, um, a full answer to your question, but I'm sure that there are going to be many conversations in the next 10 or 20 years of, of my career of people coming in and us crying together as we go through the family state organizer, of course, we'll take care of the financial stuff first. I'm sure we'll, we'll share the conversations and the less practical parts and the more emotional parts of the organizer together. As you think about all of the great advice that you have gotten in the past about being an advisor, and you pass a lot of this advice on to your clients, what would that one piece of advice be? So if, if you, you have a, a listening audience here who you have their attention, if you were able to give them one piece of advice, financial or not, in just your experience in working in this industry, what would that advice be? To realize that the value of our profession is so unique to other service professionals that you become a part of your client's extended family. You can't say that about their dentist or about their CPA or even about their family attorney. You're meeting with these people at least once a year, usually two or three times a year, seeing them through their entire journey of their life. And, and, and if you leave the relationship part of it, the human element out of helping people with their financial planning. If you look at your profession as just kind of a transactional profession, then you're going to be replaced by a robo-advisor and you probably should be replaced by a robo-advisor. But if you got into this to really help people and, and hold their hand through good times and bad and give them good sound advice, then I don't think there's a, a better profession and a more fulfilling profession out there than being a financial professional. If somebody would like to reach out to you to find out more about what you do for your clients and this family estate organizer with a heart, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Well, they can, they can call our number at InvestWise Financial 248-594-8113. We're always happy to, to speak with anybody and see if, see if we can be of help. Dean, thank you very much for uh, enlightening us today on the softer side of being a financial advisor. Well, you're very welcome, Matt. Really appreciate the opportunity to, to share the softer side of, of financial planning because I think that's really where the true value of our profession is. So I really appreciate you giving us this forum. And for all of our listeners out there, if you've noticed that your financial services professional shies away from these sorts of conversations, and these conversations are very meaningful to you, why don't you go ahead and reach out to them at InvestWise Financial and find out how you too can go through this magnificent process to be able to pass down great information for generations to come. For the Simply Advised podcast, my name is Matt Halloran. We'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thank you for listening to the Simply Advise podcast. Click on the link to subscribe to our podcast and learn more about how we can help you become more confident and informed about your financial choices.